Most gracious and most loving God, we gather this morning on Easter Sunday, not quite Easter Sunday sunrise, but we gather nonetheless in your name to proclaim your word and to sing your praise. Be ever present with us in mind, body, and spirit as we give ourselves to you this day, this Easter Sunday. All this we ask through Christ, O Lord. Amen. Amen.
who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy. Grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, O Lord, our Son, O Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
I handle onto you as the grace of ways. For I in turn have received that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according with the scriptures, and that he appeared to surpass the third as well. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, those that have died. Then he appeared to James and to all the apostles. Last of all, as one and time born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace towards me, he has not been in vain. On God, I, on the country, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe the word of the God.
they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two, the two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down, looked in, and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must first rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, on one hand and on the other, at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener. She said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord.
Before I proceed, let me first say to you, Happy and Blessed Easter. Or oh, let's try that again. <laughs> happy and Blessed Easter. On this, the first day after the death of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the third day that is, Mary from Magdala went to the tomb. Of course, the tomb was supposed to be sealed, but she went there like many of us after a loved one has died. We go to the tomb to say prayers, and to reflect on our knowledge, our wisdom, the history we have on this loved one who has died. Mary intended to recall her relationship of prayer and glory and of thanksgiving with the Lord. But to her surprise, as you know, the stone was not there. Like many of us, Mary did not know what to think, let alone what to say. She pondered in her heart many things, not knowing for sure what had happened. And in her salutation and in her worry and in her concern, she spoke to the angels. And the angel said, he's no longer here. Shortly thereafter, as you know, Jesus was standing near her and she thought he was the gardener until he said to her, Mary. And the sound of his voice was melodious. It was heavenly. It was thanksgiving. She came to the full knowledge that our Lord and Savior had risen. She reached out to touch him, but he forbid her because his hour had not yet come for him to be risen. Of course, Mary did not understand that either. But what he did say to her, go and tell my brethren what you have seen and what you have heard. Go and tell my brethren what you have seen and what you have heard. Now, if we take away nothing from this sermon this morning, is that like Jesus, I am telling you to go and proclaim the word of the risen Lord to somebody. Amen. As I will tell my congregation, call somebody on the phone, whether they went to church or not, and tell them about the glorious Easter service you had at your church. And of course, you're going to tell them the wonderful sermon Father Hines preached. <laughs> and then after that, you're going to tell them, and Father Hines said, I hope, I pray, and I challenge you to call somebody like Mary, run as fast as you can to tell somebody. This is not something for us to keep to ourselves. Because as you know, Mary told Peter and she told John. And they too came running. We ought to run until we are tired. Proclaiming the word of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now the two other disciples came and saw and wondered and pondered. But John, 
who went into the tomb realize that our Lord has risen. You may recall that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ spent how many years with the disciples? How many years teaching the disciples? Three years. He spent three years teaching them and enlightening them with all that was to come. And as you know, they didn't always fully understand what he was saying. I certainly hope that I'm speaking slowly enough for you to understand every word and every nuance that I am saying to you this morning so that you can go and tell somebody at least one thing Father Hines said. Now, having recognized that our Lord and Savior had risen, these two disciples then run to tell the others. Our call this morning is to tell others. We have come a long ways, church, from that first day of the resurrection. And there is much more story about the resurrection that we would hear of over the next six weeks. So I hope you'll be in church to hear all that happened and has to do with the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And why is the resurrection so important? Because had he not risen, there would be no forgiveness of sins. There would be no life eternal. There would be no ascending into heaven. There would be no, no blessing by, by Jesus in, with the disciples in, the, in the, the, the upper room. When he came in, the doors were shut. And he walked in and said, what did he say? What did he say to the disciples who were in the upper room? Come on, Sunday school. <laughs> what did Jesus say when the disciples were gathered in the room, all for fear? And Jesus walked into the room. He said, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Now, that in and of itself is a sermon. Peace be with you. It's akin, but not quite exactly, what you would say to someone on the road, on the street, in the market, in the theater, right here in church, good morning, with the hope that the person would say good morning back to you. So when I say, peace be with you. Peace be with you also. Amen. Amen. Boy, this is a great lesson we have going on here this morning. <laughs> because, you know, church, I have to tell you a secret. I can't keep this to myself. You have no idea what it's like for any priest to have to prepare a sermon. You have no idea what that's like, especially on a day such as this. But imagine for a moment that Father Hines walks into the church and the first thing he realizes is that what did he do? He left his sermon at home. So church, not only do I ask you to bear with me, but I ask you to preach the sermon with me. Amen. Amen. Now, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ did many wonderful things before his death and resurrection. He healed the sick, and he made the blind to see. He made the lame to walk, and he anointed, and he blessed, 
and he healed, all for God's sake. Now, Jesus was the most obedient person here on earth. How many of us, and don't lie, how many of us were obedient to the letter to our parents? No, because even at the age of two, it's no. 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 But Jesus, on the other hand, lived into and up to every word that came from the Father. He admonished the disciples. He taught them well. But like many of us, they didn't always get it. They didn't always understand what Jesus was talking about, especially whom? Peter. Peter was the voice of the disciples. Up until just before his death, it was Peter who did what? He denied, O oh Lord, that he know him three times. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Now, Easter Sunday, it's an act of God that should remain in our hearts every day of our lives. And the fact that Jesus appeared before the disciples and said, peace be with you, suggests to us that we ought to read the scriptures every day in order that the peace of God will be with us. Whether you use the upper room, the daily word, or you read from the Bible itself. You don't have to read an entire chapter. You don't have to try to read the entire Bible. Just read a portion just enough for you to inwardly digest the word of God. Just enough for you, unlike the disciples, to have some understanding of who God is and who God is to you and to me. Peace be with you. These are words of encouragement. These are words of blessing. Peace be with you. Now, Jesus was one on one and only. There was no one ever like him who came to this earth as a baby and grew up to be a nice young man who still loved his what? His mother. Even just before he died, he loved his mother. What did he say to her at the foot of the cross? Woman, behold your son. Son, behold your mother. Even up until his death. Now, for us this morning, our takeaway is not just peace be with you, but knowing and trusting and believing in the person of Jesus Christ and what he means to each and us each of us every day of our lives now i don't know what you do when you get up in the morning the one of the first things if not the first thing i do when i wake up when i open my eyes and i'm fully awake in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And I give thanks to the Lord. I give thanks to the Lord, and I have a little ritual that I would encourage you to join. I give thanks for the rising of the sun. I give thanks for the air we breathe. I give thanks for health and strength for lodging, for family, for friends and loved ones 
near and far away. I give thanks for the church gathered and the church scattered. I give thanks for all of the blessings that our Lord and Savior has blessed me with and those for whom I love and even those who I know not. You think you could do that? Yes. Yes, yes. of course. It's something for you to say thank you, Lord, every day. The disciples, having received Jesus, couldn't thank him enough. But in the long run, what happened to each of the disciples? They were martyred. They all died for our Lord. The only one we do not know of and how he died is John. John who wrote today's gospel. You and I are called, like the disciples, to live for Christ Jesus, even to the point of death. Because we fear death no more, knowing that if Christ has died and risen from the dead, we too have life eternal. We have life everlasting. It is not a shame, regardless of the, the reason for or how or when or why we die. We all must die at some point. Today is a sacred day. A sacred day in the name of the church throughout the entire world. One of my rituals on a Sunday morning to get me ready, I hope some of you do it. You know the televangelists on television? They're all there, Channel 5 and Channel 9. And I switch back and forth depending on whom I like better. <laughs> and that's okay. There are some televangelists you prefer to listen to and some you'd rather not. And that is fair game. So, of course, I listened this morning to one of my favorite. I'm not going to call his name. But he preached his Easter sunrise service, which reflected what I am saying to you. He spoke eloquently about Mary. How many Marys do we have here in church this morning? How many of us are like John and like Peter, are inquisitive enough to look into the tomb? How many of us are willing to go and tell somebody about church? I'm going to ask this question. Just think about it. You don't need to respond. How many of you, over the years that you have been coming to church and going to church, you were baptized in church, most of us here went to Sunday school, did we not? Yes. And youth fellowship, did we not? Yes. So how many of us, how many of us, on any given occasion, Call up your brother, your sister, your nephew, your niece, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, the guy or the woman next door, and said, you know, the Lord has been good to me. Amen. 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 See, we should not be ashamed to proclaim the word of God. You see this color? If you were to ask me, Father, why do you wear a color? This is a sign to everybody who I am. It's not one that I cover up. When I walk the streets with my color, I sometimes forget that I'm wearing my collar. And, it, and evidently, someone would always, or the good morning is different than those who don't recognize the caller. 
you ought to wear the smile of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. See, when you open your mouth, the way you conduct yourself, it should be a manner that someone says, he's different. She's different. What is it about that she or that he? Church, if you take nothing away from this sermon this morning, I will say that a couple of times. We cannot live our life and not explain or express to somebody the love of Jesus Christ. Especially to our children. We are living in a very diverse, a very cantankerous, a very agitated, a very disjointed world. And we need to speak to our children and our brothers and sisters to remind them that God is always what? With us. You might think he's not with you, especially in your trials and in your tribulations, but he is always there. He will never leave you what or forsake you. Even when we think he is not, he is. And I'm certain you know that. But for the most part, and, and I'm not scolding you, what I'm doing is admonishing you. I'm trying to build you up. It's okay to tell somebody when you go home today. We had a nice Easter service. We sang the best hymns. And I hope and pray you're going to sing all of the favorite ones. Right? Yes. So that when you leave here, you will be humming any one of these hymns. Because these hymns are a reflection of who Jesus is. If they didn't reflect Jesus, we wouldn't sing them. This is Easter Sunday. The queen of all feasts. It, it supersedes the birth. The birth gave us the Son of God who came to live and dwell among us, and to die for us. Easter, he rose from the dead. He arose, he arose. You just sang that hymn, did you not? Amen. So that alone should have ignited in you that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is alive. He's alive in me, and he's alive in you. Perhaps you ought to notice when a brother or sister is down. You as a disciple, we're like Mary. We're all disciples. We're all called to go and proclaim Jesus Christ res res resurrected. If you see a brother or sister who is not apparently doing well, Reach out, you know that song, and touch somebody. Ah, yes. Yes. Yes, somebody reach out and touch somebody's hand. Make this better world a better place. Yeah, that's our, that's our calling. We cannot ignore one another. Mary, upon seeing Jesus, upon recognizing who he was, wanted to hold on to him because she didn't want to do what? Let him go. She could not afford for him to slip through her hands. She wanted to be with the Lord. No raising of hands, but how many of us, how many of us live every day holding on to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is our calling. That's why we're here today. We don't worship our risen Lord only on Sunday. 
We worship our risen Lord every day, every moment, every breath. We will hear in the coming weeks that our Lord and Savior appeared before the disciples. And what did he do on them on two occasions while they were in the upper room? What did he do? He breathed on them. He breathed the spirit on them and he said, peace be with you. And now a nice habit to have is when you have a visitor and that visitor comes into home, peace be with you, my sister. Peace be with you, my brother. They think you're crazy. But if Jesus can say it, you can say it. Peace be with you. I'm so happy and delighted to see you. It's like the very way I started out my sermon. I greeted you. I invited you into the spirit, into the moment of the risen Lord. It is what we're going to do for the next week or two. If we forget after that, I forgive you. But over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be talking resurrection for the next five or six weeks. And I want you to remember every Sunday... When is the second Sunday after Easter, the third Sunday after Easter, and so on, that Father Hines said to reach out and touch somebody and make this world a better place. Amen. Our Lord and Savior rose for a reason. He rose from the dead that you and I might have what? Life everlasting. He rose that we may have life in eternity. He rose that our sins are forgiven us. We are not to worry ourselves to death, as we would say. We are to live our life in the joy and in the felicity of Easter Day. Every Sunday is Easter Day. Did you know that? Some people worship on Saturday, the Sabbath. That's how the whole notion of religion started. We worship on the Sabbath. Why do we worship on Sunday? Why do we Christians worship on Sunday? He rose from the dead on Sunday. That's why Christians go to church and worship on Sunday. Did you know that? You knew it. You just forgot. <laughs> you forgot. Because you had to have known that since Sunday school. We Christians worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on a Sunday because that's when he rose from the dead. That's when all that he promised us came into fruition. That's why Easter is a blessed and glorious time for us. I notice in the bulletin, I'm not sure if it's today's bulletin because I haven't quite read it yet, but I believe it was last Sunday's bulletin, perhaps, that it said something about wearing hats. <laughs> I don't see too many hats. Even the men were encouraged to wear hats. All right, thank you for putting yours on. Yeah, he put it on and then he took it off. And that's okay. That's okay. Because each church, each congregation have their own traditions. Lilies on the altar flowers on the altar, beautifully decorated. Every Christian church is going to have flowers on the altar. And for some of you who are my age or maybe a little younger, you will remember when you were younger or when your parents were younger, they all wore hats to church on Easter Sunday. And the dress you wore 
more than likely is a brand new dress. I like that word, absolutely. You see, church, there are things that we do that is churchy, that is church-like, but sometimes we forget why we do them. Am I correct? We forget. So maybe next Sunday you'll wear your hats because you didn't (laughs) wear them today. I didn't say go out and purchase a hat. I know you have a hat in the closet or a bonnet or whatever you want to call it. And men, don't be afraid to wear your hats. Today is a glorious day. And when you leave here today, I want you to leave with a heart overflowing with joy. Because today is a meaningful, meaningful meaningful day for each and every one of us. Had he just not died, had he not rose from the dead, I don't know where we would be. I don't know who we would be. But thanks be to God. Thanks be to God, our Lord and our Savior, who was born for us. God sent his son that he might live for us and die for us, that he might rise again in order that we might have life everlasting. You know what that means? What that means is when our loved one dies, it's not the end. You know that, right? Say it with, you know that, right? Because that person will rise again to be with our Lord. We need not worry because after someone dies, there's no more crying, no more sighing, no more tears, no more pain, no more sorrow. We have a saying that that person is in a what? In a better place. They're at peace. There, that's why we say rest in peace and rise in glory everlasting. That's the Easter part of that phrase. Rest in peace and rise in glory everlasting. Amen. Let us be like Mary, church. Let us run to the tomb. Let us have a purpose for coming to church. Let us follow Jesus' directive to go and tell somebody. Don't keep our gathering here this morning a secret. It is not a secret. We ought to tell somebody about the risen Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Let us all stand and affirm our faith by reciting the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary. Giver 
proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people found on page seven in your bulletin. We come with anticipation on this first day of the week to become witnesses, sharing in the resurrection life of Jesus as we pray, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, Alleluia. Mm -hmm. Almighty One, you have filled your church with new life and empowered us through the conquering love of Jesus. Raise us with your spirit that we may live in the power of Christ's resurrection to bring life and light to all the world. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The right hand of the Most High has triumphed over evil and death, bringing new hope to all the world. Speak your living truth to everyone who leads and holds authority among the nations that they may be agents of life and justice. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, alleluia. The apostle Peter has taught us, O God, that you show no partiality, but you accept all who live reverently and do right. Let your peace extend to every person that the power of evil and injustice may be banished and all people may live as beloved children of the divine. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, alleluia. Be with us in this community that we may be glad witnesses of your goodness, O Holy One. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, alleluia. Christ, the wounded healer, has overcome all that can threaten us. Let his resurrection power bring healing and hope to those for whom we pray, especially for Bernard Lee, Sonia Freeman, Patricia Hamlet, Afritan Federo, Monica Leslie Harrison, Rosalind Seeley, Anne Brown, Gwendolyn Cardoza, Eutrice Belfon, Sybil Jeffrey, Uriel Adams, Rupert Babb, Rita Mitchell, Anne Bernard, Celie Samuel, Adrian Harris, Lynn Thomas, Ivy Junior, Tashad Bristol, Joy Johnson, Carlos Burgos, Tanya Reed, Fitz Bostick, Greta Whitaker, Roy Howard, Eleanor Lewis, Daryl Lacey. Give thanks to God who is good whose mercy endures forever. We offer our grateful gladness this Easter day, especially for my family, my church. Family, my friends, my loved ones, this family. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed, alleluia. Christ has died and is risen, bringing life and immortality to light. We remember those who have died, especially Reverend Joan Smith. May they live in him and share in the joy of Easter. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, alleluia. You have anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, O Eternal One, and raised him from death on the cross into resurrection life. Feed us his life as we eat and drink with him in this Easter Eucharist, that we may be his witness, sharing in the Spirit's work of reconciliation and peace through the risen one, Jesus Christ, our Savior. 
Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, may the peace of God be with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. Please be seated. Good morning, St. John's. Good morning. Wow, look at the pews today. Right? I think we have two pews, but just count the altar guild for those seats. So we do have. A wonderful, wonderful Easter Sunday. Oh, ooh, look who just walked in. Jean Gittens just walked in. Wow. Haven't seen you in a while. Welcome, Jean. Welcome. Let's give her a chance to come up and fill one of the pews. Come on up, Jean. <laughs> I also see some familiar faces that we haven't seen in a while. They're not new to church. Welcome back, Paxi. I see Michael. Oh, my goodness. Oh, boy. I'm excited. Ooh, the Federas. Look at them. Oh, my goodness. Hi, how are you? Wow. This is what I love. Yes, yes. And, and Pat's neighbor. And, of course, Pat filled up two pews, three pews almost with her family. Oh my goodness, I love Easter. I love Easter, because this is what we see every Easter. You know, you may not get a chance to come to church all the time, but you never forget Easter Sunday. And that's why we are so happy to have you here today. I know that we have some visitors, but I would first like to acknowledge Father Hines, what a wonderful sermon. Yes. <laughs> Father Hines said to me this morning, Sharon, guess what? I left my sermon at home. I said, Father, you've been doing this forever. I'm sure you're going to kill it. And he did, right? Yes. yes, he did. Wonderful, wonderful. Yes, yes. And thank you for those who braved it with the hats today. I know we're not like the Baptist church and the Southern churches where we're always wearing, but you look wonderful for those of you who are wearing your hats. So thank you for taking part in that. I'm first going to start off, I know we have a, a special couple here today celebrating their 35th anniversary. So hopefully you're not too shy. We're going to call you up so we could sing, bind us together for you. But initially, and to kick it off, I would like for all our new visitors to stand so we can acknowledge you today. All right. Let's start in the back with the lady in the beautiful white dress. If you could give us your name, your church affiliation, or if you're here with a family or friend of St. John's. Welcome, thank you. And I believe this is the couple celebrating your 35th. No, it's not you? Okay, okay. Oh, welcome, welcome. 
welcome to St. John's. And hopefully you will, you know, visit us again in the future. The couple that's selling their 35th, that's celebrating their 35th anniversary, can you just step forward, please? Wonderful, wonderful. We would love for you to stand right here by the chancel, and Father's going to say a prayer, and then we are going to sing for you. <laughs> Almighty and ever loving God, watch over this your servant as they celebrate many, many years of marital bliss. Be ever present with them in the days and months and years to come. Bless them that they may continue to cherish each other, love each other, and to be there for each other, and to pass the peace among themselves. All this we ask through Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. Amen. And happily married again and again and again. Thank Amen. You. Thank you. The Lord be with you. Okay, don't go away. Just turn and face the congregation. And we will see Jay. I, I believe the congregation knows the song. Let's join in. short notice because I don't want everyone to leave right after service and know you have to get home for the Easter dinner and all the festivities for Easter but we ask that you just step outside be with us for about 10-15 minutes while we do the egg hunt with the kids and also take a look at the glamorous hats and some of the hats that you haven't seen yet we have some design and creative hats so uh, we're just gonna have a fun thing of seeing looking at the hats that people are wearing so please don't rush off. Just spend 10 minutes with us after service. Last but not least, uh, please turn to page 19. I will not go over every single uh, notice in the bulletin, but on page 19 and page 18, the Easter flowers. So we have lots and lots of uh, in memory of and in thanksgiving for, and we thank you because without your generosity, we wouldn't have these wonderful, wonderful Easter ladies for church today. So thank you very much to everyone who donated. Lenten offering, please turn that in today. You know, we start out of the Lent and then we end up with Easter. So any offering you have, please don't be shy to drop it in, your, in the plate today. Thank you so much, St. John's. Have a wonderful, wonderful Easter Sunday. See you after church on the lawn. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Come into his courts with praise and thanksgiving.
This morning is offered in thanksgiving to Almighty God for the blessing of a wonderful Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord, who came and lived among us, died for us, and rose again. The Lord be with you. Give thanks to the 
Lord our God. And a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the whole world. By his death he has destroyed death and by his rising to life ever again he has won for us eternal life everlasting. Therefore we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in your word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, O oh Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me.
Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in this sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah! The gifts of God for the people of God. Take this in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. All baptized persons are welcome at the Lord's table.
bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ.
body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The 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 bread of heaven. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us with these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, Send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ, O oh Lord. To him, to you, and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen.
May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of her Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessings. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin and into righteous, into true lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you and your eternal inheritance. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Thank you.
increase the love 